Welcome back, you guys. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Dustin from Revere Glass. If you've been a longtime subscriber, I really appreciate your continued support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please hit that subscribe, notifications, and make sure you give this video the thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow, and it helps people like you, new to glass blowing or experienced glass blowers looking for some new techniques or community, really spread these videos around. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. Today we have a really special treat. I made something for Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays because I love to be around all my family and friends and loved ones. Of course, the food is amazing. So today I made a turkey baster for you guys. So this is of course for one of you guys. Just comment in the video and I will send it right out to one of you guys. If you do win anything, go to revereglass.com to the online school and use the chat in the bottom right hand corner and that gets a message directly to us. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because we're gonna be giving away some of the things to winners from previous videos, like this mug that Dobi Wan Glass and I made, of course, we're gonna be giving away the Mad Hatter Manifold, which is an awesome tool to one of you guys. And of course, the dental tools. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to see if you won one of those things. As a special treat for you guys, we're gonna be additionally giving away this pair of Dididium glasses, courtesy of Mountain Glass Arts, our sponsor. And I wanna thank Mountain Glass Arts again for their continued support. It's awesome working with them. They're super great for the community, biggest supplier in the industry, and they take care of everybody all over the world. Thank you Mountain Glass Arts so much for your continued help and sponsorship with the community and these videos. Thanks everyone who supports Mountain Glass Arts. Go ahead and go to Mountain Glass Arts, tell them that you saw this in a video, and I think they'll even give you a little discount. One other thing I wanted to cover at the beginning here is that right now I'm doing the schedule for 2022 and all the guest artists and workshops and other on the torch people coming to help share their techniques. If you're interested and you have something that you'd like to share, please send a message on the website using the chat and we'll send you a link to the teacher's invite page. You can show us what you're working on. Hopefully we can schedule you in 2022 to teach your workshop, share some of your work with the rest of the community, or just have fun with a collaboration. All right, guys, I think that's it. Let's get into the studio, make the turkey baster, and I'll see you guys at the end. All right, happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Super stoked to show you this. I was just messing around and I was thinking, man, what can I what can I show these guys for Thanksgiving? And this is something that you guys can make your mom or you want to cook some turkey. So yeah, I'm going to start off with a big piece of vac stack. I made this vac stack on the lathe. If you guys want to see exactly how I made the vac stack, please go ahead and check out i have tons of videos on vac stacks and of course please check out the online school for more detailed information and i can definitely help you and be there with you along your journey with glass so the first thing i'm going to do is pull this vac stack down and get it into two different sizes one size i'm going to use for making the wig wags and then the other size i'm going to use for um making like the the spirals and the bigger wig wags and stuff so i need a couple different sizes here so I'm going to first pull down this big size, which is about 25 millimeters, um, the tubing diameter. Just going to heat this up, separate it, put it in the V, break that off. So using this V blade from Fire Kiss Tools. I love this thing. You can get this on Etsy, I think. All right. Snap that off. And now I'm going to attach my blow tube to this side. And I'm going to pull this down much thinner so that I have uh, some thinner stuff to make some wig wags. And you can see we got the split screen up for you guys. And this is one of the things that we do in the workshop. So right now we're doing the calendar for 2022. If you're an artist and you'd like to share with people, uh, please hit me up on my website, uh, schoolrevereglass.com. Ask for a link for the teachers or on the torch guests. And I will send you a link and we'll get you scheduled. Uh, I love giving you guys exposure and sharing the things that you're making with the rest of the people. I know I love to give back and I know some of you guys do too. So feel free to hit me up and uh, we'll get you scheduled for 2022. Uh, right now we're working on that calendar. So I'm just pulling this down and going to stretch this out so I can make some wigwags. Now I'm going to separate this again with the V blade. Put that in the V-Blade, pop that off. All right, 
get that nice and cold and then I'll be able to snap it off. I can set that tubing down for the, for the next thing. So here is my turkey baster I ordered on Amazon and I just wanted to make sure to measure this and get this approximately the same length but very close to the same diameter. So I measure that with my calipers and I have the, the width measured as well and that way I'll be able to test to see if I'm getting this the right size because of course I need, need it to fit the um, suction piece. So we'll speed this up for you guys, two times speed. I'm gonna pull this a little bit just to make it the right size. And as I'm pulling it, I wanna always keep my lines straight. I'm gonna heat this up and pull this down a little bit. And now we're, we're approaching like the 10 millimeter size, maybe nine, something like this. All right, heat that up and then I'll get that ready to put it in the V again. I like the one with wheels and these ones are particularly sharp, so uh, that's good too. All right, snap this off, set that aside for later for my next piece. And now I'm gonna attach my seven millimeter punty and just wigwag this up. So for this, this piece, I'm gonna make two wigwags, one spiral and one kind of, um, I don't know what kind of wigwag, maybe a loose wigwag, I don't know the exact name for it. If you guys know the name for the wigwag that I used at the top, let me know, put it in the comments. Also in the comments, make sure you let me know what you're doing with glass, where you live, you know, where your studio is, what kind of torch you use, anything like that. So I got Pyro and his assistant in the studio, Lee, and you can see him in the background there. We're talking about this collaboration piece that we're gonna make. And he's also filming another on the torch video for you guys. So. Make sure you stay tuned, turn on those notifications and subscribe so you can see the awesome recycler that Pyro and I make for one of the videos coming up. It was a lot of fun to have him in the studio and definitely uh, his work is incredible. So huge honor to have him and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you can see uh, the video that drops coming up in the next few weeks with Pyro on it. Just making some kicks here for the wigwag back and forth. You want to heat it up. Turn one direction and then turn the other. Just kind of want to slow your hand down on one side and kind of do a twist while you blow a little bit, making sure to keep that line really nice and centered. And you can see that there's not very strong kicks. You know, a lot of people when they're first starting off, they want to do really severe kicks, but um, you don't need to do that for normal wigwags. You can do it for specific kinds that you want to do, but um, not necessarily needed for everything. So I have all the kicks done. I'm going to condense this back down and blow it up while I'm chatting with Pyro and his assistant about the work that we're going to be doing. <laughs> so I'm just condensing this down, blowing it up a little bit of my blow tube by my mouth. So you can see I'm starting to push this together and blow a little bit. And as I'm pushing together and blowing, I'm keeping the wall thickness uh, a, a little bit thinner, but still pretty thick and I'll be able to condense this more and then blow this into a little ball. So I heat this up, pull this off and make my termination. I'm going to pull that really thin blow and then pick that little piece off so that everything comes together in a really nice termination. Heat this up, condense it down and blow it into a sphere. And now I'm going to take my mini torch and I'm going to heat this up right in the center and blow a little hole. And now I'll take my taglia tool, open this up with the graphite, and then I'm going to attach a punty. And this way I'll be able to even out the other side. I always like to attach my punty and then blow out this side. Some people like to leave them on at this point. Um, some people just attach a blow tube, but I find it much easier to finish off this termination when I'm in line like this. So I heat this up, pull off any excess glass and really bring that to a nice point. Pull that off. And now I'm going to attach my blow tube, heat this up and blow just a little bit. I'll detach my punty and then give it one more. 
blow into a nice sphere. Alright, blow this out. And I'll be able to set this down and make one more of these wigwags to do a little Tetris in the center of the turkey baster. Always make sure to polish your blow tubes, you guys. Definitely makes it a lot easier and you have to be less mindful. So I'll heat this up and do another little wigwag for you. Connect this blow tube here. First, I got to open it with my jacks. All right. I have my 12 millimeter blow tube and I'm going to connect it to my pulled down wigwag tube again. Heat up this connection just to make sure it's nice. And then heat this up and detach that so I have just the right amount. All right. Now the next step is I'm going to attach my punty and then make a bunch more kicks and make this second wigwag for you guys. Let's start off by heating it up. Sometimes the first one is a little bit harder than the other ones. It tends to fold a little bit. So I'm going to heat that and then bring it back down, back and forth, making some kicks. Here we go. Connect that. And there we go, just heat up the next one, twist it the other direction. The thing to keep in mind when you're making wigwags, and of course there's tons of more content that I've made about making wigwags, it's a very common technique in the American lamp working tradition. So I'm gonna heat this up back and forth. I really like to keep the kicks pretty small because as I expand the ball, the kicks kind of start to get a little bit sharper and sharper as we go more and more into a sphere. So now I'm going to heat this up and conden conden condense it back. And then push these together and that's going to help me make a sphere. If you like this bandana, check out a few videos back and one of the one of you guys who watched the videos sent me some handmade bandanas. You can check those out. They're super cool, handmade. And if you guys are making anything and you want me to check it out, feel free to send me a message on the school. Uh, we're a community and we do this together. So I'm happy to uh, give you guys a little bit of exposure on some cool things that you're working on if you think it'd be interesting for the other viewers. So just send me a message uh, on the Revere Glass website using the chat. I'm going to heat this ball up and make this more of a sphere. Here we go. All right, we got Pyro getting ready. Lee, his assistant, apprentice. <clears throat> Blow this out, make it a sphere, and then I'll be able to change the access. Pop a hole in there. I want to make sure I line this up right. I'm going to go in on the clear side because I'm actually going to end up putting the two uh, opaque sides together. And Pyro is teaching, teaching his apprentice. And it's really beautiful to see other glassblowers teach. You know, I think that so many of us um, couldn't have done this without the people who helped us get to where we are, and definitely including myself. And so you know, I've dedicated a lot of my work to helping you guys and I find it so rewarding to to share these techniques and to give access to some things that were maybe a little bit esoteric or quite a bit esoteric uh, when I started and certainly in the years before I started. There's, as many of you know, a deep history of glass blowing secrecy. So uh, I definitely broke the tradition by putting these things on YouTube and uh, exposing everybody to to these, you know, traditional, more advanced pipe making techniques. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that if you guys want to show appreciation for all the information that that's out there, uh, feel free to hit me up and come do an on the torch video with me. If you have a special technique or something that you think people would like to see, um, I'm happy to, to look at it and um, see what we can do with that. So I'm going to heat this up and uh, blow a hole 
right in the center here where the opaque color is. Blow that out, and then this will be ready for my connection to the other wigwag. It's a pretty simple shape in the end, but I do have to be precise about the length of the be um, the turkey baster and the width especially because I need to fit that suction on the top. So now I'm going to detach the clear blow tube by blowing it out, get it really thin, put it back in the flame to make sure to not create any bubble trash. And I'm going to pick this off a little bit, make sure that it's nice and clean. And I'm going to attach these two wigwags in a Tetris formation. So I want to make sure to line up these peaks together. Put that back in the flame. And now I'm going to go into the center and just blow out the center a little bit, making sure that the, the top is hot enough. I'm going to go into the center and then blow this out. A lot of people like to attach a punny at this point. Um, you guys are totally welcome to if you find that you can be more stable that way. But as you guys know, many of my techniques are based in my furnace experience that I had really early on, and I've adapted furnace techniques for borosilicate lamp working. I'm gonna heat this up, blow it out, and then we're getting ready to make the, the main shape of the turkey baster. All right, now that I have this shape kind of in a cylinder, I need to make this the right width. And so I'm gonna go onto my Marver and grab my calipers, make sure that you know I'm in the right range. So I have two, two sets of calipers, one for the, the width and one for the length. And I'm just going in and stretching this out really gently because I don't wanna mess my pattern up, but I do need to get it into the right width so that uh, it'll work for a turkey baster. And it does work, you guys, like absolutely. And this is for one of you guys, of course, like, you know, all the videos, we have something to give to you guys um, to share the work that's made. So if you think that you're going to be cooking some turkeys, if you think that this is a turkey baster that you'd like to give to your mom, just let me know. Put in the comments what you what you want to use the turkey for, what you're going to cook with the with the meal. Just let me know and uh, we'll send this out to one of you guys, of course. It's going in on my Marver. Back and forth here, rolling that. And you can see the line, you know, where I lined up the wigwag. You can see the peaks on either side pointed out. There's my caliper. I'm just measuring the whole thing. Looks like I'm pretty close to where I want to be now. Maybe go in and just do a couple little final shapings here. And uh, once I have this main piece made, I can even use that as a reference as I'm building up the other components of the turkey baster. So I'll heat this up and open it up by popping a hole. So I'm gonna thin this out a little bit, bring all that glass to the surface. And once I have that hole in there, I'll be able to set it up for the next connection. Pop the hole, heat that up. There we go. I'm gonna open it up with my jacks. All right, clear that open. And then that'll be ready for uh, the next piece that I'm going to attach. All right, let's get that prepped up. We can put that in the kiln. I'm gonna attach a, a bridge here just in case that I need one. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it, but um, it's good to have that there if I do need a bridge. We'll see what happens as I put this together. All right, so that's in the kiln, and now I'm gonna make the next piece. So I'm gonna heat this up and bring this together to close it down. I'll put some, some air into here to make sure that's a nice round bottom. All right, now that once I had that closed and evened out, I'm gonna be able to heat it up and pull. And bring it all the way down. All right, pull that hole there. I'm gonna connect my 12 millimeter blow tube. I'm going to separate the piece that I want to use now for this will be the top of the turkey baster and it's going to be a kind of a loose wigwag where I twist it all the way around one direction then all the way around in the other direction 
it creates a different look but uh i just want to do a few different line work patterns for this for you guys and of course you can make the turkey baster out of anything that you want you know any color color tubing whatever you think will be best so i'm gonna heat this up pull it down just a little bit make sure that's all the right size just stretching it out All right, so I'm using my L Marver to even that out, and I'm starting to do the first turn. You can see the three camera angle, which is something that we use in the workshops a lot, so that you can see multiple angles from anywhere. And we do have a lot of great workshops coming up in 2022. A lot of wonderful teachers have said they'd like to help and uh, express themselves on the school and teach a little bit. So make sure you turn on those notifications, go onto the school and uh, just sign up for a free account if you want to get on the email list so that you can know when the different teachers are coming but we should have one about uh, almost every month in 2022 so i'm going in heating this up and going to the other direction now and i want to keep going on my l marver to make sure that it's nice and even and it's going to keep going back and forth and evening out the walls now i'm twisting the other way you can see using the l marver again all right, we're getting close now, close to the close to the piece that I want. You can see that the tubing is it's folding just a little bit. So what I'm doing to compensate for that is I'm blowing out as it's folding and then using the Elmarver to get it into shape and that's going to even out the walls and fix the fold. But it's not folding the lines over. It's just like if I went any further, it probably would. So you need to make sure to monitor your work and not let the lines themselves fold on each other because that'll mess up your patterns. So I'm going to heat this up and get this into the right size approximately and then I'll be able to attach it. All right, marvering this back into the flame and I'll be able to open this up and get that hole ready and prepped up so that I can attach it to the Tetris section. And then on the bottom, I just chose to do straight line tubing pulled down because I knew I was going to be stretching that down a lot. And any of these back and forth patterns would, would not look quite as nice uh, stretched out like that. So we're just going to do a straight pattern on the bottom. Connect this and then I'll be able to uh, detach my blue tube and finish off the shaping. All right, now I have these two kind of connected. It's a little bit sloppy, so I'm gonna go in and blow this out, put it on my marver, and get this back into the right shape. Use my L marver, of course, while I'm blowing. And you can see that's starting to expand and even out. So I'm gonna have to go do this a couple times just to make sure it's nice and even. All right, heating this up, condensing this back and using my L marver. And you can see it's pretty even at this point, probably going to one or two more times, even this out. I'm gonna take off any excess glass here on the end. Pull this off. There's a, there was a little bit extra because I was measuring it and I could tell that this is gonna be a little long. So I just pulled off about half an inch here on the end. All right, put down the water. <clears throat> I'm gonna heat this all up go onto my marver and make sure that it's in line with the diameter of the middle section which I measured with the calipers. Just marvering this and now I'm going to go back in and make sure that the seal is nice and straight and the reason I used this particular kind of tubing is because I wanted to be able to see the liquid in the baster so I knew how much liquid was in there so I used some fade to clear it's like fade to transparent green technically but I used a half opaque, half transparent so that I could monitor the liquid when I'm basting. All right, now I'm going to attach a blow tube onto this side and then we're going to switch it and attach the last section, which will be the little nozzle. All right, take this piece off. You can see that turkey baster coming to, coming to shape. I think it's fun. I mean, if you guys can make things that you can use around the house. You know, there's so many things that you can make. Of course, pipes are amazing and you can make your own pipes, but you know, having the skills of a glass blower 
Uh, you can learn to dance like Pyro over there, or you can just, you know, make things for your house like uh, lighting or turkey basters, cups, bowls, anything that you could imagine you can pretty much make in your studio. All right, I'm gonna attach a blow tube to the last piece and I'll be able to set this up so I can attach it. We'll pull off any excess tubing here and I'll use my V again. Pop this off. All right. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is heat this up and blow just a little bit, make sure that the walls are the right thickness for this piece. And I'm not gonna do any twisting or um, spiraling or anything like this. All right, go into the marver, even it out. Blow just a little bit. This is getting set up so that I can attach it to the other two pieces. Open this up to blow a hole. There we go. Pop that open. And now I'm going to open this up just a little bit, flatten it out with my jacks and get this hole prepped up so it's the right size to connect. All right, I'm gonna connect this last little piece. Connect these two push and then pull just a little bit. Now I'm going to detach the other side. Leave any excess glass, take it away and leave what I want. Now I'm going to heat this up and make sure that this is the same size and same diameter as the rest of the piece. All right, blow this out. You can see that I haven't twist, twisted at all on this one because as I pull it down, I want those lines to taper really nicely and evenly. I feel like it'll give a good look to the piece. So I'm gonna attach a punty and just stretch this a little bit, kind of prepping for my taper. All right, you can see that's getting pretty, pretty even, but I'm gonna go in. I wanna make sure that that seal between those two sections is nice and even. Blow this out. And now that that's pretty even, I'm gonna heat this up and pull out the nozzle here. Make sure that it's the right shape. So I'm gonna heat this up and pull a taper. So I want a nice soaking flame that's uh, pretty, pretty soft. I don't want one particular part of this to be too hot. So I'm gonna start to pull down. You can see it's starting to taper, but I want that end to be just a little bit thinner. So I'm going in, making sure that that taper is exactly what I want. I'm gonna heat up here. It looks just a little bit bigger over there. Now I'm doing some minute adjustments on the shape to make sure that the nozzle is what I want. Just pulling it a little bit, making sure that this is all nice and centered. And you can see that there's a little bit of unevenness here. So I'll go into the L Marver, even that out, blow just a little bit to expand it, making sure that I'm keeping this nice and straight. There's just some slight adjustments that I'm making in the taper. You can see I'm pulling it on very carefully, making sure that that taper is nice and even. There we go. I think this is gonna be good. It's making me hungry, just making this. All right, this is getting pretty good, looking like what I want. There still is a little bit of a bump, so I'll take this out, get this ready. And now I'm going to attach a blow tube to this nozzle side. And in the end, I'll just saw this off and on the saw. But um, yeah, so I'm going to attach my blow tube and then switch it so I can make the end what I want, which is I'm just need to thicken up that lip a little bit. So it gives a nice place for the suction piece to attach to. I'll attach, uh, detach the, the first blow tube and be able to open up the top there. I'd love to hear what you guys think um, and you know what you would use the turkey baster for, what kind of meals you would cook. And um, yeah, make sure you comment in the video. And if you'd like a little bit more help, please go to revereglass.com and check out the school. And I'm happy to be there with you along your journey with glass. There's tons of good content and workshops and advanced techniques and basic techniques. 
All right, we're gonna heat this up, open it up. All right, get that thin, pull that off, then blow, open that. All right, and now we're gonna flare this open just a little bit and then condense it back and that'll create a nice lip. And I don't wanna flare it more than the width of the piece but very much just a little bit maybe if anything i just want to also make that lip nice and thick so it's stable easy to clean so i'll put in the marver there i have my paddle on the side I'm just trying to make that nice and even thicken up the lip a little bit all right this is pretty much the baster you guys for the turkey and you could use it for i guess anything in the kitchen but uh yeah here it is so Make sure you comment on the video, turn on notifications and subscribe so you can see what else we got going on. Here's some nice shots of the turkey baster all completed with the suction and everything. It works really well. I tested it out for sure. So you can check out those wigwags and the spirals, the nice green fade. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll give this to one of you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Welcome back you guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. You guys have asked questions and I appreciate that so much. I'm gonna answer these questions for you guys and then I'll let you know the winners. Justin Cook is asking, what kind of tools are the most essential for a beginner glass blower starting off? Torch and a kiln and ventilation and glasses. Those four are absolutely necessary. So the hand tools that are really good, that are cheap to start off would be like a set of graphite reamers, a cigar cutting shears that you can use for your diamond shears, some scissors. You can really get a lot of the hand tools really cheap by going to Mountain Glass Arts and checking out their economy section of tools, even going to Goodwill or a thrift store. You can find some really interesting things that you can use to manipulate the glass. But your most key tools are torch, kiln, glasses, ventilation, and gravity. You can do a lot with just that. Thank you for the question. The next question is from J. Fernando Guadarrama S. Thank you so much for the question. And this was a question that we found on an older video. And he's asking what I dropped into the joint as I was making the mini tube. And what that is, is a piece of 1 10 thousandth stainless steel. And it creates a little bit of a buffer in between the joint male and female piece so it doesn't get stuck. You can get that at McMaster Car. Maybe Mountain Glass has it too. It's just a very thin piece of metal. You could also use graphite tape and a few other things that you can do to solve that problem. Thank you for asking. The last question is from Cross Glass. They're asking, how do you handle being a traveling glass blower, dealing with shops, and you know maybe working out of a mobile studio? And one of the best ways to meet shop owners is of course go in person if you're traveling. Just stop by, look to see on Google where there's some local shops. Just go ahead and stop by, ask to talk to the owner or the buyer, show them your work, and then see if you can make a deal. Some of the other good ways are of course Instagram growth, which you can get a lot of attention that way. And there's some trade shows all throughout the country every year, specifically Las Vegas and Las Vegas is one of the bigger ones and you may want to check that out. You'll be able to network with a lot of stores and even other glass blowers. So yeah, good luck on your journey and tons of connections that you can make with stores and store owners. Thanks for the question. All right, you guys, it's time for the giveaway. So for the first thing that we're gonna give away is this Mad Hatter Manifold. And there were so many people who wanted this, you guys. And I really wanna appreciate Mad Hatter Glass for coming out and showing you guys this. For the winner of that tool, it's gonna to be going to Boogmang2021. Please go to the website, revereglass.com, use the chat in the bottom right, and we'll totally ship this out to you. Thank you so much. All right, the next winner is for these tools, these sculpting tools, which is again, a great tool from the previous question. What's a cheap tool that you can get as an introductory glass blower? These are not very expensive and they do a lot of great things. This is going to Trevor Trevor. Thank you so much for watching the videos. Please go ahead and go to the website, use the chat, and we'll ship it right out for you. All right, you guys, the last thing that we're gonna be giving away is of course the mug from the last video. And this is going to Matt Berger. Thank you so much, Matt, for checking out the videos and your comments. I really appreciate all you guys' support. If you've won something, use the chat in the bottom right of any of the pages on the website and we'll ship it right out to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. There's a lot of good content coming up, good workshops, there's guest artists. So make sure you turn on subscribe, notifications, and give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon in the next one. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.